Bonjour and welcome to my channel. Today I received this box, a K40, a laser engraver. Let's open the box to see what's inside. First, let's take a look at the, the box itself. After checking around, it was a little bit damaged. Let's take a look inside. Here we are, this is the machine and everything seems to be perfectly well under this sheet of plastic. After checking all around it, no dent, nothing, let's continue unboxing it. The inside seems to be very well packaged. Okay, the first thing I noticed is the laser was a little bit too much on the left. It's, it almost touches the enclosure, so I had to move it to the right a little bit. I inspected the inside, the side of the power supply, and noticed something that is mm, quite bad. As you can see here, there's a hole so I can plug the USB cable, but it doesn't fit. Let me show you. As you can see here, the connector is not aligned with the hole. The plug does not fit, so I have to move the board and put some spacers. So let's do this. First, I unscrew the panel on which the board is screwed. I removed the board and I added four spacers, plastic spacers, under the board and rescrew it as it was initially. And now, as you can see, the plug fits perfectly well. It was not a big problem. Easy to solve. So let's continue. I initially installed the laser on the left side of my bench, but mm, I decided to install it on the right and install the cooling water underneath. But first I have to clean up the mess. As all the owners of this machine, everyone removes the inside metal plate and I noticed why it's quite small in there. So I decided to do the same thing and remove the bottom plate that came with the machine. Now let's take some measurements so I can drill the holes through the bench to uh, allow the tubing to go inside the water bucket underneath. Okay, now I have to put a little bit of foam around so I can tape it and plug the exhaust that came with the laser engraver. Let's screw it. And now, let's put the machine on its final destination. Next up, I decided to drill holes in the, one of the metal sheet that came with the machine, uh, screw some posts and use it temporarily so I can do a couple of tests. It's not very stable, but let's say it's okay for now. Next up, 
let's uh, drill holes to install uh, the tubing to uh, cool the laser. I'm actually adding uh, 12 liters of distilled water in the bucket. A couple of finishing touches and I'm gonna be ready to make the first modification, an air assist. So let's go in Fusion 360 to proceed. This is what I thought about regarding the air assist. You see here the mirror that is angled at 45 degree. The laser comes in from that side, bounces in the mirror, goes through the lens and touches the surface. After doing a couple of research on this site, I found that the normal distance for the lens that comes with the K40 is 50.8 millimeters. So, as a reference, I designed a laser with this light, this length. So this line represents the laser beam that goes from the lens to the surface. And I have a small object here just to give me a reference. And I drawn the, the, the same size for uh, the laser. So I decided to build around it. Now, to help me with the focus, I thought about something. Uh, if I have two lasers going at a certain angle, here we have two lasers touching the surface at 30 degree each, I noticed that I should see one single red dot. But as soon as the, the surface is going down or up, I should be able to distinguish two laser dots on the surface. This one is not going to be visible. In fact, I'm not going to power on the laser because it's so dangerous, so I don't want to see it. So I, I want to use two small laser pointers that will touch the surface at the same point. This will give me an idea of the height. It's a simple trick that I thought of. So this is my idea. Now, to help me, I bought two lasers on Amazon. I place the lasers quite low on the structure because I noticed that when the tray moves to the left, its structure reaches almost between these two poles here. So I decided to place the laser quite low on the, in the structure, but still be able to beam at the same point. So this is, this is the idea. I drawn two plastic support to include the laser. I will glue them and this is the main part. This part is based on another one that I found on Thingiverse. This one here, which is good. The, the angle pushes the air directly here, but uh, it doesn't go uh, low enough for me. And because it's an STL, it's difficult to work with. So I decided to redesign the whole part myself. And this is the part that I designed. Just to give you an idea, here we are. So I'm going to have a part that will screw around the laser and I have two screws here to support the laser. So I will do the focus the best I can and then I will loosen the two screws, adjust the laser angles to get on one single point and I'm going to tighten the screw so the point will guide me and I'll be able to adjust the angle of the, of the two small lasers to make sure that there is only one dot when the surface is at the focal distance. After this will be printed, uh, I will install a tube here on this side of the part and the air will go through the part and will touch the surface precisely. I just have to mention one thing though, I only have one laser. So in the next part of the video, you're not going to see two laser points. I will come back on that a little bit later. I ordered many laser pointers, but I didn't receive all of them so far. So I will have to continue without the support of my two red dots pointing at the same place. So let's send the three parts to the printer and install it on the laser so I can do my first test cut. So here we have it, the final setup with the exhaust tube that goes through the door. Everything is working well. I'm actually doing my first test 
The focus is wrong, but still I, I got an image. I wanted to do something, so I decided to use the laser. I'm actually pumping air through the tubing uh, that goes uh, to, through uh, the part that I designed. And the water is pumping through in a, a water pump that is inside the bucket. This is actually the test I'm doing. But let's do a real test now. As you can see here, I am cutting, not only engraving, but cutting through uh, three millimeter plywood. I'm quite impressed. It's working very well, very fast, very powerful, and very precise. It took about, let's say, maybe 3-4 minutes. It works very well. Let's try to build this small dice. As you can see, the parts are snapping off very easily. After a few minutes to figure out the faces, I managed to build the cube. I'm so pleased with this new machine. I already have a lot of new projects on my list. So, this concludes the video for today. I hope I inspire you, and if so, subscribe to my channel, share, and see you next time. Bye!